Hello, hello, good evening. Uh, we come to you tonight on a Wednesday to declare the goodness of the Lord. It's our prayer that you have been good. God has watched over you. It's a blessing to get in touch with you once again. We want to welcome you in this program and we are encouraging you to share with your friends. Please invite your friends. We are giving you a few minutes so that you can invite your friends to join us in this program of uh, Wednesday as we share the word of the Lord. It is our prayer that God has kept you strong. He has watched over you. And we want to thank God for another opportunity to be with you. So please welcome your friends. Share with your friends. Those who are on Facebook, please share. Those who are on YouTube, please subscribe to our page so that you don't miss the program so we are encouraging you so that you can share the word so we pray that you you share the word you share you share you share that page and the lord will bless you it is important to share the word to share with your friends because the bible has told us to go out into all the world and so that we can preach the gospel and what you one way of preaching the gospel is by sharing that page so that we can uh, let many, as many as you can know that you are sharing the word of the Lord. You never know what this program will do to somebody. Please share that page. We encourage you to share. And if you are not subscribed to our page, please subscribe so that you not, don't miss the program that you will be airing every other day. Wednesday and, and Sunday, so please and we encourage you to share. And the Lord will bless you as you do that. As we prepare ourselves with Brother Andrew here, so that we can share the word of the Lord. It's our prayer that your week has been wonderful. At the time that we have been with you on Sunday, we know that the few days that has passed, God has walked over you. No matter what has been happening, Thank God that you are alive and well. The Bible says, let everything that has bread praise the Lord. And because you are alive, let's praise the Lord together. Hallelujah. As we, as we begin this program, we want to just pray, say a prayer, so that we can go straight to the word of the Lord. And I believe God has prepared something for each one of us tonight in the name of God. Open up your spirit, open up your heart. Put your seat properly. Suspend everything that you have been doing for this wonderful time. The Bible says, men do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of the Lord. And God is using us tonight just to share the word. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us. That we can share with our friends, we can share with our brothers and sisters, we can share with those who will be watching even after this, we pray that you may speak to us. O oh God, speak to your people. He is living. We pray that you find its way in our lives Amen. to bring change and transformation to the glory and honor of your name. Anoint our ears. Anoint our hearts, O oh God. Anoint even our mouth as we speak, dear Lord. That, O oh God, you are going to speak with boldly and with anointing in the name of the Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome once again. We have been sharing a fantastic word because we began from the man to understand who is man. And we have moved quite a lot for a few weeks. And I think for the, pre, the last two weeks we have been sharing about the grace. Because we realize that we cannot be able to live a victorious life unless we understand who we are, unless we are born again by the Spirit of God. From the book of John, chapter 3, as we understood that one has to be born again to see the manifestation of the kingdom of God at work. And we understand that we are saved by grace. We read from the book of Titus, chapter 2 and verses 11, it says, For the, uh, the, the grace has appeared to all men that teaches us, the grace has been salvation that has appeared to all men that teaches us to say no. To ungodliness. And we have been sharing that with Brother Andrew, and Brother Andrew is together with me once again, and he may say hello as we progress with the word. Greetings in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, 
just pray that you'll be blessed. And um, I think the pastor can carry on. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Andrew. And I believe you have enjoyed the ministry of Brother Andrew. It has been quite encouraging to have with him with us. And we are going to progress. And I think he can recoup to us, divide us what we learned last week about the grace. Well, we thank God for God's grace. We, we learned about um, just justification by grace. Our salvation is through, by grace through faith. And if I may, I'd just like to, can I just go straight into Romans? Yes. Because we looked at Titus last time, but to, to move on, this is a fundamental passage of scripture, which we all brothers and sisters need to know. That, that in Romans, the book of Romans, Paul's letter to the Romans, a, a righteousness is revealed that's not by works, but it's by faith. It's something brand new, brothers and sisters, and it's, it takes a, a mental shift to understand what is going on. We naturally, the, the carnal man wants to try and be good, to win faith with God. And we see that even with, with Noah, probably. The first time we ever hear about the grace of God is with Noah in, in Genesis chapter 6. And uh, the, the, the wickedness had come, up, come upon the earth, and God decided in Genesis 6, verse 7, to destroy man. So the Lord said, I will destroy man, for I'm sorry that I've made them. And then this wonderful verse, verse 8, But Noah found grace, or found favour, in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. So you can understand that, you can understand why he achieved favour with God, because he was a good man, he was a just man, he walked with God. But we read in Titus last week that the grace of God appeared to all men, both good and bad. And that's really the, the wonder of the New Testament, the wonder of the Gospel. And I'm, I'm planning, if we may, to begin to explain how that can be. Yes. That this favour that used to just come on individual men if they pleased the Lord, has suddenly become available to all. Amen. So the grace, the favour, has appeared to all men. Amen. Whether you have been walking with God, or you have not been walking with God, you have not been walking right, it has appeared to all men, and we can all zero in to this grace, to this favour of God. And it's only by faith that we can do this. It's only by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ that we can receive this favour. It's available for all of us. Amen. As Brother Andrew has talked about Noah, Noah was chosen among many, and he was given the grace, he was favored by the Lord. But in this dispensation, we understand, by in this time, we understand the grace has appeared to all men. And we can zero in to this grace. Amen. I think the, the basic reason how this can be is because Jesus Christ, has found favour with God. It's, it's His favour, it's His grace. He, grace and truth came through Him. And, and we're found in Him, it says in, in Philippians. If you're a believer, you're, if we can be found in Him and we uh, benefit from the grace that um, G Jesus had with God. Amen. So we understand that it's available for salvation, it's available for, for sanctification, and I think we... We learned, last week we started on uh, the grace to serve. Grace to serve. Because we understand that God has availed His grace not only to save us, and not only to sanctify us, to help us to say no, or to overcome sin, but He has also availed His grace so that we can serve Him. And probably we are going to pick from, we can read a scripture from the book of Second. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verses 9. If you can turn with, with us to your Bibles in the book of Second Timothy chapter 1 and verses 9, we see what the scripture is saying. The scripture is saying, first Timothy, in Second Timothy chapter 1 and verses 7, who have saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works but according to his own purpose 
and grace which has given us has given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So we understand that grace was not only availed for salvation, it was availed for us to be able to say no and also to serve. Because the scripture says that according to our works, and they were not saved by, by according to our works, but according to his own purpose. So there is a purpose of why God has availed his grace. And one of the purpose we know, and uh, I think Brother Andrew was talking about the gifting that has been availed to each one of us. Mm -hmm. Grace has been given to each one of us. Not to keep it, not to feel good, mm -hmm. but to use that grace to serve. And I think, Brother Andrew, you can repeat that scripture that you read about the service, the, the gifting of God that God has given us. Yes, in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 7, the Bible says, But to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So, brothers and sisters, there's a grace for you to serve the Lord. Amen. And I was, I, I, when I was thinking about the grace to serve the Lord, and I was wondering, how would I serve the Lord? How would I zero into this grace? Because sometimes we think that I can only serve on the pulpit. I can only serve if I have a call of a pastor or I call a, a, have a call of an evangelist. But I understand or I realize that it's the simplest thing that you find yourself doing. You start doing it. And the Lord continues to grace you, to give you grace, to continue to help you to do that which God has called you. So it's important that you understand because the grace has a, a been availed for service and each and every person has been given the grace, has been given the gift to be able to serve, we can start doing it. And we say it, it is important when we learn what the scripture is saying we claim it before God. God, you have given me the grace to serve. Amen. May it be able to manifest upon my life. And don't only sit down, use it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I, can I continue from... Um, I never got to Romans chapter 3, so I'd just like to yes, you can. make, make a, a point, really. Um, it says in, in verse... Chapter 3, verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that's being brought back, which is in Christ Jesus. And then in verse 25, we can see that this grace was not just because God decided to be, feel well disposed towards us, but it's given to us through the, the blood of Jesus Christ, through the sacrifice of Jesus. It, wasn't, it couldn't have been given before Christ. And we can see that in the next verse. Verse 25, Whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith, or through faith in his blood, to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed, to demonstrate his, the present time his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. And so we see that this... It's a, it's a costly um, grace that we've, we've achieved, and we haven't paid that price, but we must always be thankful to Jesus. Mm. We mustn't just think, oh, it's just grace, but it's the grace that came through Jesus' blood. Mm. So you have said, you have said something very, very profound that is a costly grace. Mm. It's, it was something that was paid. Mm. For us to achieve the grace, it was paid by the blood of, us, of the Son of God. Amen. He suffered so much so that we can acquire this grace, so that we can be set free. And therefore, we can only reciprocate this by loving Him, by serving Him, by allowing others to enter into this grace by sharing His word. And the only thing that we can do is to serve God by what God has given us. Because we understand as Brother Adol has said, it's a costly grace. It, it was not bought by money. It was bought by life. Amen. Somebody pay, gave his life for us to achieve this grace. And therefore, there's a scripture that Paul asks, 
we continue sinning because grace is available. Mm -hmm. So we can't continue doing that because this grace was a costly grace. Amen. I like the one that you have used. Is that it was costly Amen. because it costed God his son. Amen. And therefore, the only thing that we can pay is to live life, to serve him. And because even serving him is not our own effort, there is good to serve. Amen. And the other thing that follows on from what you said is that we ourselves can't pay anything to achieve our salvation. We, we can't work for it. And that's what it comes on to say. Uh, now to him, in, in chapter Romans 4, verse 3, now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. If, you, if you're working for something, that's no longer a gift. Mm. It's, it's wages. And it, it says it even clearer in Romans 11, verse 5, verse 6. In Romans 11, verse 6. And if by grace then it is no longer of works, otherwise grace is no longer grace. But if it is of works, it is no longer grace, otherwise no work is no longer work. So we can see that there's always a choice between, is it a, are we taking it as a gift, or are we working for something? And we saw this in this scripture, it's also concerning ministry, 2 Timothy 1.9, that we've been looking at. But it says, we've been called not according to our works, so even our calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose. Mm. God has chosen us because he has a purpose in, your, in our life and in your life. Mm. Not because we've done something good. We can't, we can't work that out. Amen. So, so we understand, we understand that God has called us not because of our own work. But he, it was just by grace. It was just his goodness. And therefore, as uh, Brother Andrew is saying, we should reciprocate this grace. We should reciprocate. We should uh, uh, not rather paying back, but we should live as God expects us to live. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the scripture says we were called, the, the one who has called us is holy. Mm -hmm. And I understand that the word holy means set apart all wholeness. That you are living according to what God has purposed. In fact, I was looking at that word from the, 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 the Latin, the word holiness, and it is almost the same word with all. That tells you that when God says to us, when we are told to walk in holiness, is fulfilling every scripture, what God has said in his word, that is living a holy life. Because I was, I've been wondering, how do I live a holy life? Is it uh, living in a certain way? But is according, living according to the whole counsel of God, the, expect the expectation of God, what God expects us to, to do, we do without breaking in law. And we are saying the grace to serve. Amen. And when you mention reciprocation, I also thought of the, the, the ministering grace to one another. Mm. It says in... Um, there's a, there's a, we learned last week that the, the Greek word is charis, which is, means grace. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if you've, I'm sure you've heard of the charismatic churches. It means the churches that have received free gift, charisma. It's the same, same idea. And there's another word, charizomai, to, to forgive. And it says in um, Colossians 2.13, he has made us alive together with him, having forgiven you, all trespasses that we've been forgiven through his grace mm. and then in verse chapter Colossians chapter 3 verse 13 or well, verse 12 therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved put on tender mercies kindness humility meekness long-suffering bearing with one another and forgiving one another and that's this word charisma to minister yeah. to give grace to each other just as God has given grace to us, Jesus told a parable of a servant who had been forgiven a million pounds and he wouldn't forgive his fellow servant ten pounds. We've received so much grace, brothers and sisters. We must uh, minister grace to one another. Amen. So it is service. Amen. So we should minister grace to one another. And I, and I think I would want to add a word in the book of 1 Peter 4. If we can yeah. look at that. 1 Peter 4 and verses 10. 
The scripture says, First Peter 4 and verses uh, 10. The scripture says, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Amen. So as we have received, freely we have received, because the reason why I'm saying is freely, because it's a gift. You don't have to work for the gift. We haven't labored for this grace. So he's saying, as one, everyone has received a gift, so minister the same to one another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So we are, we are, we are encouraged, or we are admonished, or we are, we are being encouraged every now and then, that we, uh, we, we minister with the gift that God has given us, mm. according to the manifold grace. Not according to our effort, not according to our power, but according to the manifold grace of God. Amen. And this manifold means it's very variegated. It's got many facets to it. God, God is, God's it's like a rainbow, if you like. It's got all these different colors. And each one of us just, just has one part of that. God's grace con contains everything, but each one of us has a part of that. Part of that grace that we can right. minister. Amen. And that is very powerful. You have, you have put the word rainbow, and I am thinking of a color of a rainbow, how it has got many colors. And a rainbow cannot be complete without one color. Amen. If one color is missing or two colors are missing, then the rainbow cannot be called a rainbow. And I want us to understand, we can never be complete without each other. Amen. So when you are sitting down with your gift, which you have received freely, then the body of Christ is suffering. Or somebody is suffering. So we understand because we have been given grace freely to serve, we should use this grace. Amen. Because you, the, the body will be incomplete without you. You may think you are the smallest person or that you have, you have the least gift, but I want you to understand it is needed. Amen. Remember the power of the talents when each was given the talents of some of monies and they went and uh, made, made more money with it. But uh, the one who buried his talent, he, he had that taken away. So Jesus warned us very severely really, not, not to waste what God has given us. It's precious, brothers and sisters, we must put it to use. Don't be afraid if you're fearful. Take, get, step out of the boat Amen. by faith and use your gift in Jesus' name. We want to pose a question to you. What has God given to you? What have you received? What have you received from the Lord? And you really look at yourself and you wonder, how did I achieve this? What is that that God has given you? God is calling each one of us to use the gift that he has given us freely. To serve others because Peter has encouraged us that all of us we have received grace, we have received a gift. And as we serve, we are not using our own effort. He's just stepping out as Brother Adam has said. You step out and the Lord will back you up. Amen. I mean, I just can't help saying it's very familiar to most of you, but we are a body. The, the church is, is the body of Christ. And the, and the body has many parts. And we, we can't body can't function properly without its ear, without its hand, without its foot. And each part is of equal value, really, before the Lord. Amen. Uh, apart perhaps from the head, which is Jesus himself, but, but everything flows from him. And as we, through the operation of the Spirit of God, as the Spirit of God flows through the body mm. and anoints us all, then the body functions um, and, is, and acts as Christ on the earth, bringing life and peace and joy Amen. and salvation. And I think it is important, we, we can't close this uh, broadcast without praying. Mm -hmm. We need to pray for our viewers, to pray that for those who have not discovered their gifting, or those who have not known what they are called to do, may God open their eyes and begin with the smallest thing possible they feel to do. Because we are not all, all called in the pulpit, we are not all, because we confuse 
that there are people who are called because they serve as pastors or evangelists or uh, other people. But I want us to understand, as we have read, each and every one has been given gift. So we want, I want to ask Brother Andrew to pray that may God help you to discover where you need to serve. Because God will ask each one of us, what did you do with what I gave you? So Brother Andrew, if you can pray for us, pray for our viewers, that God will open up our eyes to know, where am I supposed to serve? Mm. Father, may you May our eyes of spiritual understanding be opened, Lord, to see the calling upon our lives in Jesus' name. I, I, I often think that it's really good to speak to your pastor always. Also, when, you, when you're asking the Lord, what's my gifting? Also ask your pastor, because God will give him grace right, to speak into your life as well. And the prophetic ministry too. Don't um, neglect it. So we pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that the body as a whole would recognize the gifts in each other mm. in Jesus name. Amen. So don't just think of your own gift but also I pray that we'd also have a, a heart to, to recognize each other's gifts as well. Mm. Father we pray that you would release fresh gifts in mm. Jesus name. Amen. We pray for this understanding, dreams and visions, uh, you quicken the word of God as, as we read it and you give us a heart to serve in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We also want to pray for somebody who probably have been serving. And maybe you have done so much, you feel you have tried your best, you have served, and nobody has ever said, told you thank you. I want you to know it is God who reward. It's God who gave you that gift. And it's the word, God is the Lord who is going to reward you as you serve him. So if you are there and you are discouraged because you have served and you are waiting for men to tell you thank you, we want to pray for you that God will encourage you. Father, we pray for our viewers. We pray for ourselves also. Where we have served you and we have felt that we have not been rewarded. Lord, we know that it is you who reward. And I pray that that brother, that sister, that friend who have been discouraged, oh God, may you encourage them, our Father. They may continue and your grace will be so sufficient, our Father, as they continue to serve. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us not be, grow weary in our doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Galatians 6 verse 9. Amen. So let's continue serving. Let's continue doing the work of the Lord. For if we do not give up, we are going to leave a harvest. So there is a reward. There is a reward. So we want to pray. If you are there, you are not born again. If you want to give your life to the Lord, you want to pray with you that the Lord will show his glorious grace upon you. And uh, you come to him gloriously and start serving him in the name of the Lord. Father, we pray for those who are viewing and they have not given their lives to you. We pray that you may save them. May this light of the gospel shine upon them. We thank you because you are faithful and you are saving them by your grace. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, viewers, for watching. Your yeah, time has run out, but we would want to wish you God's blessing, God's favor, God's grace to multiply upon your life. And as we connect with you next Sunday, please join us as we continue sharing the word of the Lord. God bless you. Meet us on Sunday and Wednesday. You are blessed.